Sid. I remember what you told me. But if no one is listening to what you have to say, you may as well not say it. But I will say this, old friend. Hugo Kukur is gone. His shadow looms over us no longer. It's a pity the Phoenix can't be in two places at once. If he'd have been with us, maybe he could have done something for the lost. Not even the Phoenix can bring people back from the dead. Life has a beginning and an end. So we must live while we have the chance. as slaves to the crystals, but as free men. May we join you? Lady Karen, what a pleasant surprise. I thought I'd drop by and see how you were all doing before heading off to restock my supplies. It wasn't the most scenic view back then, but it were never as bad as this. I know. The blight marches on. And soon, there will be no escaping sights like these. So our mission remains unchanged. We cannot stop until every Mother Crystal is gone, and their thirst for ether with them. The only one that remains in Storm is Drake's tail in the Crystalline Dominion. Our next target. We're going to Twinside. It's the capital of the Empire these days. I wouldn't like to think how tightly guarded they've got the place. Not that that'll stop you. But we do well to scout it out before you go charging in. We would indeed. If you're off to the Dominion, you can take this great lump with you. <gasps> Goods. Oh, I am sorry. Have you forgotten you're the most wanted man in the Twins? I thought you might like to disguise yourselves as the attendants of a travelling trader. Assuming you've no better ideas. You wanted to buy yourself some tools, didn't you? Well, now's your chance. <laughs> You're letting me go with them. Oh, thanks, <laughs> Nan. Stop that. You'll break me bones, you great galoot. <laughs> There's a caravan that runs back and forth between the Dominion and the Boklad markets. It's managed by the Merchants oh, Guild. Just show them Goots' traders pass, and you'll be on your way. It'll be a damn sight less risky than footing it the length of the Crystal Road. That's for sure. Thank you, Karen. And glad to have you with us, Goots. Oh, oh, OK, then. I'll get me things, and I'll meet yous there. See yous down in Bucklad. Get off! Me poor fingers! <laughs> <laughs> Jill, you're with me. Understood. And Gav? Already on my way, Captain. Be careful. Aren't I always? Do you see that, Sid? Your protégé's making a proper little outlaw of himself.
We need to find a way into Drake's tail. And we will. Together, this time. How are you feeling? Better. Thanks to Taya. I'm glad to hear it. And Torgal helped too. The new boy. This used to be a trade route for merchants crossing the Scars. Till the Republic laid a new road wide enough to let wagons pass. And all official traffic moved there. Leaving this one for those living outside the law. Indeed. I doubt we'll be the only outlaws on the trail today. Be lucky to make it out alive. Really? It's as bad as that? Oh, why? There's trouble up ahead. And too much of it for us to handle. I take it there's danger on the road. Oh, what about this fearsome looking fellow? You think he'd be equal to the task? Oh, no doubt. Assuming he's willing to hear us out. Well met, friend. My brother and I have been tasked with finding a merchant's missing cart. You seen it by any chance? How does a merchant misplace his cart? Oh, the man's a coward. When he thought goblins might come a-snarling, he ran. Leaving his livelihood abandoned in the pass. And he sent the two of us to fetch it, but it's gone. Now, I'm not much of a thinker. I know the work of thieves when I see it. My brother's right on all accounts. And by my... We may have seen our share of action, true. 
But we've not got the skill in arms to boldly brave an ambush. You, however, have the look of a man who needs... Chances are they'll come for you either way. But if you promise to lend us a hand... Well, if I'm going to have to deal with them anyway... You've clearly got a fine head on those broad shoulders. We're lucky you came along. Now, hoping to make a heavy purse in Boklad, our merchant friend look reckon he won't be forking over the rest of our fee if we don't find those goods. So, what? All right. Just don't expect me to drag the cart out of there myself. No, no. Uh, you can leave the cart to us. You just put an end to those bandits and point us in the right direction. You do that, we'll take care of... You'll be doing Botclad a favor if you can clear out that pass. Boy, I dare say they'll give you a hero's welcome. I'm not sure I trust those two. But if there are bandits lying in wait, I should probably take care of them. <laughs> Look lively, you lot! No. We've got guests! These must be our bandits. them dealt with. Now, oh, where's that card? out of here will be a nightmare. Seems we've found ourselves the right man for the job, wouldn't you say? Found the cart and didn't leave a single bastard breathing. Our merchant friend will be delighted. And how exactly will he be getting his goods out of here? You leave that to us. After all, it'd be wrong to make such a fine warrior haul cabbages to market. You've done your part. And that's all you need to worry about. Here. It's been a pleasure. Now piss off. There's no need to be so rude, brother. What if we want his help again next time?
You've had your reward and you're not getting any more. Now piss off. People take notice of wealthy men. Shouldn't be too hard to track down Karen's collector. The same Drake's fang is gone. The whole Mother Crystal gone. Welcome. If you're hoping for a bed, I'm afraid you'll have to look elsewhere. My reputation will be ruined! Ruined! Calm yourself, Lord Ignac, I beg of you before you do yourself a mischief. Pardon the intrusion, but... Out! Get out! I paid for these rooms so I wouldn't be disturbed. Leave me be! Please, allow me to apologize. His lordship is going through a difficult time, and he's never been fond of guests arriving unannounced. Radim! Get rid of the filthy oaf this instant! Very good, Lord Ignac. Would you mind stepping outside for a moment? I'm sorry if I've caused you any trouble. That? No, no, no. That's just how his lordship is. He has been dispossessed of his luggage, you see. The thieves also made away with a considerable amount. I don't suppose a certain blade was among the stolen items. A single-edged sword. It was purchased from a merchant friend of mine. Ah, you know Lady Karen. Yes. And I'll retrieve Lord Ignac's luggage. But I have one condition. You have but to state it. You are welcome. I want an audience with Lord Ignac. A few minutes should be enough. Then I'll be on my way. A condition I would be a fool to refuse. Of course, you shall have your audience. I don't suppose you saw where the thieves went? I did not, no. Though some discreet inquiries made on his lordship's every ill-gotten coin in Dalamal. And that's where I'm heading. I shall speak to Lord Ignac in your absence. That will be very kind of... Farewell. It's a wonder the Republic tolerates them. My carpet! The most now, fragrant herbs and spices! I know you're king, but do you have to use the, the good salt? Please, some for the rest of us. Sorry, Master. I'll go and get some more later. Probably ran out of gill, just like us. Made from the stoutest stoneware. No, I'm telling you, it's gone. I saw the crater on my way back from the free cities, and it was empty. Did the constables test you properly before they gave you that brand? A thousand gil for a measly bunch of... It's all the fault of this blasted war. The moment they find out you're from the Empire. Are 
Are you looking for something in particular? Here you are. Fare you well. Come on. Faster. Deserve a rest. There's no turning back.
Company. Come on, lads, let's tear the bastards head off. This must be Ignac's luggage. Nothing seems to be damaged. All right. Let's get it back to Delamel. I hear I have you to thank for the return of my effects. What shall I call you, my good man? Wyvern. Glad to make your acquaintance. A formidable name, indeed. Well, Wyvern, I appear to be in your debt. Redim here tells me you wished for an audience. Is that all? A few moments of your time should suffice, yes. You're a peculiar fellow, Wyvern. All right, speak. A master Wyvern was wondering if you could tell him about a certain single-edged sword you recently acquired. Oh, a true work of art, that one. Karen drove me hard on the price, but I would have sold her Radim here to get my hands on that sword. It was made in the Outer Isles, far beyond the Twins, and is used exclusively by the practitioners of a unique school of swordsmanship. They believe no combat should ever exceed a single strike and hone their blades to such perfection that none ever does. Each sword is made for that one perfect stroke and for that stroke only. 
they crack upon a second blow. There's a brutal sort of beauty to it, really. But how do they hunt such an edge? <laughs> Fine question. Why, they use a whetstone, of course. Whetstones, rather. A whole array of them, ranging from the coarse to the fine. Ten thousand licks with the sharpening stone, then ten thousand more. But it is the final stone which lends the blade its legendary sharpness. A mineral quite foreign to this great realm of ours. And that is the key. The secret ingredient. Why, when it occurs to me that my little lecture is hardly equal to services rendered, take this, together with my regards, the very stone of which I spoke, far rarer among collectors than even the blade itself, and a far more fitting payment. Thank you. Pardon the intrusion, my lordship. However, it is long past time we prepared ourselves to depart. So it is. I am locked in bitter competition with a rival collector of curiosities. I am one step ahead of the unscrupulous scoundrel, but he is hard at my heels. Are there are many other collectors out there. Too many to count, but only one do I consider my nemesis. Lord Byron Rosfield. And is a perennial thorn in my side. <laughs> I can imagine. Farewell, Wyvern. May our paths cross again. Radim, we mustn't dawdle. I think his lordship is rather taken with you, Master Wyvern. Thank you again for your assistance. Coming, my lordship. I'll be right there. Trust Uncle Byron to find such an interesting rival. Now, let's see what Blackthorn makes of this whetstone, shall we?
Come on. No need to ride from here.
journey's over. Now to collect the ash. I should probably have brought a bucket. This looks like the stuff. Let's see if there's any more. That should do it. If a wine needs more than this, he can fetch it himself. There's talk at the glass. Did you hear? The gates to heaven. I want to see you again tonight. But the captain's late with our pay. It's a... Lady, I come bearing gifts. Gifts? Whatever is the occasion. Done yourself. Otto asked me to give it to you. To settle the hideaway's debt with the veil. And to compensate you for the time it took us to do so. Oh, you disappoint me, Clive. I thought you might finally be warming to me. Tell Otto he can keep his baubles. I tried to tell him as much the first time around. The man owes me nothing, nor does the hideaway. My contribution to the restoration effort was made freely and willingly. It was the least I could do. You once told me Sid did you a kindness. I'd like to do the same. Please, accept it. For my sake. And for Otto's. For all of us. For all you've done. <sighs> it is rather fetching, isn't it? Very well. <laughs> Otto is lucky to have you, Clive. I doubt anything could ever replace his son. But you and the others at the hideaway are the closest thing he has to family. Otto had a son. Long ago, yes. Sid told me Otto lost him when he was just a boy and blamed himself for not being able to stop it. I don't know how it happened, whether there was anything he could have done, but it was clear that it weighed heavily on him. I didn't know. How could you have? I doubt anyone did. Besides Sid, I've never met a man more keen to bear his sorrows in stoic silence. An ill habit, given that both have always been surrounded by friends desperate to help them. <laughs> I'm beginning to see that.
I remember you. Clive, we weren't expecting you. I wasn't expecting to be here, but it seems we still owe you a considerable amount of coin for your help with our rebuilding efforts. And though I doubt it's what you were expecting, we were hoping you'd take this as payment. A star, Ruby? I can't accept this. It's worth at least twice what you owe me. More if you can find yourself the right buyer. Think of the difference as interest. Interest? If word got out I charged that much, no one would ever borrow from me again. Anyway, why are you the one here asking me about this? I'd have expected Otto. Bit much sending the Lord Marquis out to sell your debts, isn't it? The old goat working himself to death again. Something like that. Most days I think he's the only reason the hideaway's still standing. Same as always, eh? Back when the place was nothing but a twinkle in the eye of a recently retired Lord Commander, word is he was the first one Sid reached out to. Probably knew that without his strong arm and level head, the idea would never get off the ground. Sid may have been the face of the hideaway, but Otto's always been the backbone. And when Sid passed away, we were all worried that would be the end of it. That Otto would just give up. His death was hard on everyone. But it must have hit Otto hardest of all. But he didn't give up, did he? Quite the opposite, in fact. If I recall, he was the one who nominated you as Sid's replacement. And rallied the rest around you. I reckon what he saw in Sid, he saw in you too. And don't we all... Doesn't hurt that you're half as stubborn and twice as handsome, neither. That, and you keep good company. <laughs> I suppose I do. Go will want to know the stones were delivered. If he's still with us. Suppose now I have to find someone who can actually afford a star ruby. After it. Suppose now. We have to find someone. Who can actually afford a star? Wild beasts, this end. All their twisted town. Run like the wind. Toggle. Oh! 
Now. Will it be enough, I wonder? I say that answers my question. Which means we owe the lawsmen our thanks. You're just a big puppy, aren't you? A very big puppy. <laughs> you do know you can take that with you, Toggle. Lady Karen will be relieved to hear you've got your appetite back. Come on, boy. This one has a little more life left in it. All right, then. Whoa! 
Stay sharp. Oh, do. Thanks very much. Take care out there, eh?
Noticed you and Togel had gone off somewhere. Took him for a walk, did you? <laughs> you could say that. So, Molly's leftovers weren't good enough, eh? Well, will teach me for treating you like you're still a pup. All right, all right, no need to shout. Now we know what you're after, I can see about getting some in. 
Speaking of which, I brought one for later. Can I leave it with you? You can, I. I'm nice like that. In return, you can thank Tomes for me. I was just on my way to see him. Ah, Clive. Were you able to locate your quarry? We were indeed, Lawsman. You pointed us in exactly the right direction. And Torgal's been a very happy hound ever since. Very good, very good. Lady Karen sends her thanks, by the way, for your part in solving the mystery. Ah, but that reminds me. After your last visit, I found myself pondering Torgal's talents. Do you recall our conversation concerning Lady Jill's role in Torgal's transformation? About how she somehow woke the power within him. Precisely that. A reasonable conclusion, I thought. But one which raised certain questions in my mind. You see, the Fenrir of legend served Shiva and Shiva alone. And while the powers attributed to him are certainly impressive, the records imply they are somewhat different in nature to those you describe Torgal as having used. What are you suggesting? that Torgal may be the beneficiary of more than one icon's power. Consider that in addition to Lady Jill, he has served as a loyal companion to you, your brother, and even the late Sid. In short, the icons hitherto near at hand, or should I say at poor, have been diverse and plenty, and that number has only grown as the realm's dominance have fallen to your sword. One can but speculate as to how all of this has affected Torgal. He has seemed more... fierce of late. And if I am not mistaken, he will grow fiercer still. We are fortunate indeed to be able to count him amongst our allies and not our adversaries. <laughs> oh. He's more than an ally. He's a friend. How good it is to see you, Clive. I have compiled some new entries, if you would like to see them. You wish to study the tomes? everything you needed? Sorry for the wait, but hopefully you'll agree it was worth it. You learned something about that sort then? I did better than that. find anywhere in Valestia. No wonder I couldn't get a same finish on the grinding wheel. <laughs> One hit and all done, eh? Might not be so bad if all you ever fought were duels. <laughs> good luck on the battlefield. Your second opponent would be your last, no matter how good you were. Even so, is there some way it could be used to give the Curse Breakers an edge? I think so, yeah. With this whetstone and the right kind of steel, 
I could probably even make a twin of the play to rattle me. But there'd be no replacing this little rock once I worn it down to a sliver. I reckon we get a dozen swords from it, if that. Swords that the curse breakers wouldn't know how to wield probably, and that would see them through a single fire piece. Nah. No point trying to copy that thing. Be about as much use as a wax anvil. But finishing our blades with a whetstone is fine. Now that's something to consider. And what's finer than fallen masonry, eh? Or more hard wearing for that matter. Just imagine it. Good Valisthean steel with an edge as sharp as any found in the Outer Isles. I won't make a copy, nah. I'll make something much better. I'm sure the curse breakers will be delighted. Just... don't push yourself too hard. <laughs> don't you worry about me, sunshine. I'll be working day and night since I was half your age. And I'll still be here when you're long gone. Hey. Thanks, Clive. I mean it. I owe you one. August 2. It's good to know someone's looking out for me. You'll be happy to hear you said that. And I'll see that my debt to you's paid. First new blade I make's got your name on it. You come and find me when you've got the materials. All right. I will. Anything else? How's that hunt for the... I have it here. That's the stuff. And plenty of it. You're a gent, Sid. Right then. The chief said it would. <sighs> Very impressive. <laughs> Says the man who cut down a burning boulder. Speaking of which, there's no need. The good. It Don't be. 
Why don't you let me take a look at that bag of yours? The one you keep your potions in? Reckon I could work some magic on that, huh? What kind of magic? Well, we happen to have isolated a substance in our test run of the Alembic that I reckon will make even the toughest lever supple as anything. Thought we might use it to breathe new life into old boots and the like. Save the hideaway a few, Gil. Ah, I reckon if we slap a bit on your bag, it'll loosen it up enough for you to squeeze in a bottle or two more. Well, it can't hurt to try, I suppose. That's the spirit! Leave it with me. I'll only be a mo. Well? What do you reckon? It certainly feels more... Of flexible. Right? Told you. Thank you. I think. No, no. For supporting Mid and the rest of us in our endeavors. Without you, we'd never have been able to discover wonders like that stuff I rubbed on your back. And I'm telling you, there's plenty more where that came from. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Best of luck out there, Sid. Goat. Still alive, I see. So Lady Karen accepted the ruby. Ah, oh, about that. Uh, I tried my best, but she was just too stubborn to take it. She threw it right back in my face, in fact, and told me I could stick my stupid stone where the sun don't shine. Karen refused payment. I hope it wasn't something I said. I'm sure you were as tactful as ever. Let me see what I can do. Oh, wonderful. I hope you have better luck than I did. Mid told me she was building a ship.
Lady Karen, Goad tells me you weren't happy with our offer. Would you prefer the debt was repaid in coin? What debt? I don't recall lending any of you lot me hard-earned gill. I may have tossed a talent or two in the Hardaway's coffers, but those were donations, and you can hardly call it charity if you go asking for it back. Of course not. But one good turn deserves another, and our circumstances have changed. Surely you wouldn't shun the gratitude of a pauper who happened to have become a prince. Oh, so you're a prince now, are you? Fine. But I'm selling it and taking what I'm owed, then you're getting the rest whether you like it or not. Where'd you even get this? A decent trader might nab a thousand talents for a star ruby. A canny one, meanwhile, might claim it were nicked from the belt of Sid the Outlaw himself and ask twice as much. Might be I already have a buyer in mind. Might be you even know her. The fine continental maid whose beauty's only eclipsed by a guile in commerce. You wouldn't mind, would you? Not at all. Just be sure to tell her that it's always a pleasure doing business. I hear you ended up delivering all three stones. Thanks to this lump. I sometimes wonder what I pay you for. Speaking of which, I, uh... I, I, I still haven't been paid last month's wages. Oh! So you remember what's owed to you, then? Get your ass beyond that disc of yours and don't get up before those ledgers are square. Right away! I've seen that before. You yeah, have, yeah. Plenty of times. It was the only goblet Sid ever used. Either out of habit, or because the filthy soul couldn't be bothered to find a clean one. I knew so little about him. Like most people. Martha and the Dame both seem to have fond memories of him. Huh. I bet they do. How long did you know Sid before he... Before he died. Twenty summers, give or take. Back in the day, I was a purser on a trade ship, which is where I met him. He bought passage to... I oh, forget where. And having nothing better to do on the long nights, we set up drinking island rum till the morning bell dragged me back to my duties. Quit my post not long after that on account of making a fine maiden's belly fat. But me and Sid stayed close, promising we'd one day sail the seas again. That was... before fate stepped in and said she was having none of it. The magic woke inside my son soon after his first name day, and there was no hiding his neck. Couldn't you and your family have... My family? Were the ones who summoned the constable wanted the monster taken away. I couldn't turn my back on him, forget what I felt, and I couldn't for the life of me understand how they could. Luckily, Sid was of the same mind as me. It was him who stood beside me when all I wanted was to tear the whole world down. Him who cried for me when I had no tears left of my own. Him who swore he'd do everything he could to stop it from happening again. And he was true to his word, too. Left the Royal Army once and for all. His ranks, his ribbons, gone. Just like that. Threw away everything he had. All to right a wrong that no one else had the courage to face. I knew then I'd follow that man to the ends of the earth. He 
was always too clever for his own good, and was Sid. Saw the world for what it really was, while the rest of us were content to go along with the lie we were shown. And it can't have been easy, bearing that burden alone. But he didn't let it stop him. He never lost faith in what he believed was right. And that gave us faith in him. Faith he'd steer us true. So I swore on myself that I'd always be right behind him, ready to catch the stubborn sod if ever he should fall. But I couldn't even do that. Ignore me. Just the ramblings of a tired old man. Leave that lot. I'll tidy it up in a bit. This. This is Sid's handwriting. Dear Otto. I may be drunk, but I wanted you to know this place would be fucked without you. Love you, you old grumpy old sod. This note. Hmm? What about it? Sid was right. Without you, we all be lost. He should have bloody well said so then. Just once. Before he went. <laughs> but then, why would he? Him, or anyone? I'd only have told him to piss off. You're wrong, though. Both of you. It was never just me keeping the hideaway afloat. It was all of us. I just shoved people in the right direction. I barely seem to be able to do that anymore. Would you rather go with the helm? <laughs> well, maybe I've got a few more years left in me. <laughs> I'm going to hold you to that, Otto. Before you go... Sid would have wanted you to have this. But that... This will do me just fine. Thanks for the ray of sunshine. I'll see if I can't pay you back. Already have.
Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. Is everything we've received and everything promised? Here you are. Best of luck out there, Sid.
You, uh, might want to give that thing a rinse. Can't claim it's what Sid would have wanted, but even he wasn't right about everything. And how may I assist you today? What is it that you wish to learn? Here's the latest information I have. Thus ends today's lesson.
I see the Dalmex lag behind Rosaria when it comes to bridge building. The fallen ruin should hold at least. The path continues on the other side. So this is the Megas. A land of the gods. It's even more impressive than I imagined. I remember being captivated by the story as a child. Long, long ago, man was overcome by avarice and challenged the gods in a bid to win their power. The final battle took place here, at these falls. Or so the legend goes. If anyone ever manages to plumb those depths, perhaps we'll learn if there's any truth to the tale. That the gods emerged victorious and punished man for his defiance by visiting upon him two curses. Dominance in Paris. Tell the truth. I always thought it strange that the dominant and their icons were deemed a curse. Back home, the dominant inherited the throne. They were admired and exalted, not spurned. Whenever I got to that part of the story, I always assumed there must be something I'd misunderstood. You had a lot of storybooks, didn't you? In your room, I mean. When we were young. The old legends were always my favorites. Epic battles between gods and men. Father encouraged me to read as much as I could. He thought it good for my education. You really were a boy like any other, weren't you? <sighs> Just look at this place. It's enough to make you believe the legends are true. I know. We're not far from Boklad. The road will be busier up ahead. And we'll have to keep our wits about us. <laughs> Something wrong? Nothing. It's nothing.
I see the reports are true, Father. You have surrendered the throne to Olivier. I have. Emperor Olivier shall rebuild the Holy Empire of Sambre. How is he to rule an empire? He is but a boy. I shall advise him until he comes of age. Father, please. Or for as long as I am able. The empire we seek to build needs young blood to rule. And I can think of none better suited to the task. There is other news, Dion. Hugo Kupka is dead, and Drake's Fang destroyed. The pillars of the Republic have fallen. Ere long, the Imperial Banner shall fly over every city in storm. And then, Valisthea. All shall bow before their Emperor. Father, these are the words of a tyrant. They are the words of a god. The emperor whom I gladly serve. Great Grieka made flesh. Return to your camp, Dion, and ready your forces. It is time to show the world the true power of Sambrek. Father. <laughs> I find you much changed. Is this truly the path you wish to tread? Or are these the ambitions of another? Of Ultima, perhaps? What nonsense is this? I speak my mind, and my mind only. Though I do owe Annabella thanks for reminding me of certain truths. Regarding the nature of nations, of rulers, and of the divine. You would trust the words of this traitress. She betrayed her country. She slew her husband. You have ever been an invaluable servant to Sambrek, Prince Dion. I trust you will continue to serve your emperor in the wars to come. The canker! Silence! Insolent wretch! You will bend the knee. All else is heresy. Sire, forgive me. This audience is over. Come, your radiance. The Rowena Syndicate awaits your pleasure. No, not another meeting with silly old men. They're so boring. I'm hungry, Father. Can't we have luncheon instead? Does it pain you that you will not inherit your father's throne? I have suffered worse. <laughs> Count your blessings, Dion. For a base-born child to be chosen by Bahamut is miracle enough. You have risen high on his wings, but you shall rise no higher, lest your impure blood stain the throne. What do you know of my blood?
The Boklab markets are to the north. We just need to hug the coast. Infiltrating the Dominion won't be easy with the Imperials on high alert. No. His Radiance has lost one capital already. We can be sure Sylvester will do everything in his power to hold on to Twinside. His troops are well trained and increasingly battle hardened. But it's not as if we can wait for the siege to end. <laughs> over to the Crystalline Dominion too, are you? There's good gill to be made there. Believe you me. Yeah. The minute I heard them bandits have blown up Drake's fang, I packed up his store and pulled me boots on. And so did you, eh? I did have a plan to make me fortune with some baths down by the dollar mill in. How can anybody sit back and relax in a land that ain't got a whiff of the Crystal's blessing no more? And that's when it hit me. If you're looking for lucre... The Dominion's the place to be. Soon enough, half a storm will be headed there. If I can get in first and set up shop, I'll have a license to mint Gil. The Guildmasters of Canver will be beggars by comparison. I'll be famous in all four quarters of storm soon enough, and I'll have a fortune that'll make me ma and pa bright. Further to Bokhtad now. Good. I've had my fill of life without magic, if you can call it life. The sooner I can fill my flask from a crystal like a civilized adult, the better. Close the road to Randalar. If the siege breaks, they'll need more than this to stop the Imperial Legions marching on the capital. Oh, I'm done for. If I can't get these goods to Randalar, how will I pay for my bread? Just if you haven't got a pass, you're not getting through. Please.
This is no time to ride. Good girl. We're nearly at the markets. I'll get you something to drink there, all right? More refugees. And they're all making for the crystalline dominion. Because they don't know how to live without the crystal's blessing. Come <laughs> on. 
crystals here. We have to keep going. The crystalline dominion is our only chance. I know, but the checkpoint. This is where we're supposed to meet Goots, isn't it? That's right. He said he'd wait for us here after replenishing his supplies. I dare say he'll have finished by now. to the Crystal Road ourselves. Scooping up all the best customers. Leave some for the rest of us. I wish to engage the Crimson Caravan services. Where's the proprietress? She's otherwise engaged at present, my lord. Come back later. found another victim. Can you believe it? I believe it, all right. What's that? The third this month? Ah, a soldier like yourself could do with hearing this. If ever you see a couple of brothers up in Leighton's cleft, you just pass them right on by. And why is that? Because they're duplicitous bastards who make Catthroats and footpads look like upstanding citizens by comparison. What they do is befriend a passing merchant, someone new to the area, and steer them straight into the arms of bandits. The merchant dead and his murderers busy bickering over the poor bastard's wares, the brothers set to sweet-talking some other unsuspecting fool, a warrior. Now, the brave soul charges into the footpad's den thinking he's doing the realm a favor. And when he's done, the brothers sweep in and loot the bandits and dead merchant both. Yeah, there's a lazy sort of cunning to it, I suppose. You'd think they'd run out of bandits eventually. So close to Bokland? Not bloody likely. <laughs> I suppose you're right. Anyway, if you run into them, you steer clear. Or better yet, give them a damn good hiding. <sighs> I really wish I had. Thanks for the warning. Ah, if 
our new arrivals had brought any coin with them, we'd be rich. Don't find a finer array this side of the strait. A fine choice. You've a discerning eye. You're welcome any time. Let me carry your goods. I'm cheap. Peaches and pears, beets and beans. Wonders from across the water. Come one, come all. Feast your eyes. Good sir, can I interest you in... Uh... How much? For a measly crust of bread? You won't find any cheaper. Not nowadays. They are more than welcome to look. Empire's unlawful and illegitimate occupation of the Crystalline Dominion is still in effect. Only those whose business in Twinside has been officially approved by the Republican Army will be permitted to cross the border. All who seek entry are a formal line and ready their documents for inspection. It looks like we aren't the only ones who are eager to leave. And they're checking everyone. Can't you make an exception? Not for the likes of you. We won't get through without that pass. Let's go and find good, shall we? He must be around here somewhere. Come, taste my peaches! They're sweet as You should come with me to the Dominion. Life will be different there. find anything of this quality in Twinside. I'll take the large one. <laughs> An excellent choice, my lord. Oh, good. There you are. Clive, I, I'm so sorry. Don't tell Nan, will you? Slow down, good. Just tell us what happened. It's me trader's pass. It's gone. We cannot ride the caravan without it. We won't even be able to get through the flipping checkpoint. Do you remember when you last saw it? It was in me pocket a minute ago. Then a burn bumped into me and... Here. You don't think that they might have nicked it, do you? It wouldn't surprise me. A busy market like this is prime territory for pickpockets. So, to get the pass back, we need to find this child. Where would we even start? <gasps> I, I know where! I, I've got a pal in Bocklad who might be able to help us. No one knows more about what goes on round here than she does. Where do we find her? She's the owner of the Crimson Caravans, up that way. Sound's got a red chocobo on it. No time like the present. You two go on ahead. 
I'm gonna check the rest of my stuff, make sure no one else is missing. All right. We'll meet you there. Go to the Crimson Caravans and ask for the owner. Let's keep an eye out for this red chocobo, then. And the other on our purses. Stops next to the checkpoint. If you're looking for the Crimson Caravans, head out of the canyon. Out of my sight, wretch! Looking to hire a coach? It's ten million for a two-birder to the Crystalline Dominion. Take it or leave it. Oh, we're not here for that. Then I bid you good day. Wait! Don't go, El! He's me mate! As I live and breathe. Goots, what are you doing back in Boklad? I gather Lady Karen didn't send you. So what trouble have you got yourself into this time? Uh, it's me trader's pass. It got stolen. By little Ben. Of all the... You're the size of a marble. Honestly... Ugh. Goots told us that you know the markets well. Might you have an idea which little band could have done this? We don't intend to punish them. We just need our pass back. Then... We can be on our way. I see. So neither of you has a trader's pass either. Not that anyone would take you for traders, but I suppose that's why you came to me, correct? Now, I can't say for sure who took your pass, but I suspect I know why they did it. Let me explain. Ever since the Fist marched on the Dominion, the Republic has been clamping down on any commerce that might aid the Empire more than it does us. Which means traders' passes have gone from being merely a way of easing one's progress to being essential if one wishes to cross the border at all. And with demand outstripping supply, they've become a precious commodity, leading some to seek to acquire them by less than legitimate means. So the children are stealing passes to sell on the black market? Yes, and no. Passes are inscribed with the names of their owners, and yet none of the victims' names have appeared on the register of those passing through the checkpoint. Which means? That someone is doctoring the stolen passes. The same someone who is encouraging the children to steal them. And the same someone who has Goots's pass, no doubt. Whoever they are, they're ruining the livelihoods of honest merchants. Which is why we've decided to take a stand. Will you stand with us? You want to get your pass back. And we want to ensure that no more are stolen. Catch whoever's behind it all, and two birds shall be slain with a single stone. Is there any other way of getting to the Crystalline Dominion Goods? They won't let you in if you're not with the caravan. It's that, uh... I don't know, try swimming across the strait. But, but the guards will definitely spot you if you try and do that. Like, uh, we don't want to get spotted, right? So either we find the people who took the pass, or give up all hope of entering the Dominion. All right. We'll help. Thank you kindly. Um... Yeah, but I don't know your name. Eloise at your service. Clive. A pleasure doing business with you, Clive.
The proprietor of the furniture makers by the coach stop is spearheading the search. Wear that, and he will know you for a friend. I suggest that you speak with him first. The furniture makers. Understood. Out of my sight! Come on, come on! Jug of snake spit for the road. The caravan stops next to the check. Traders pass. Are you the furniture maker? Looking for something in particular? Ah, I know where he's collared you too, eh? Then I expect you want to know more. She told me you were leading the hunt for the pickpockets. What have you learned? For one, that they're targeting the traders carrying the biggest packs. Harder to watch your back, see? And less chance of the mark giving chase if they're spotted. Not that they'd be likely to catch them. Those imps know every inch of this warren like the backs of their hands. Their eyes must have lit up when they saw Goots. The fishmonger round by the gate's been trying to track down the children involved. You should go and have a word with her. Thank you. We will. You won't find anything of this quality in Twinside. You should come with me to the Dominion. Life will be different there. Fish for sale! Fresh sorted and smoked! Can I interest you? Ah. Sorry. Message from Eloise, is it? She's asked me to help her. To help you find the pickpockets. Is that so? Suppose I better tell you what I know, then. For one, this isn't a family operation. All the traders say the children who stole their passes were dirty, dressed in rags. Street urchins, by the sound of it. We get a lot around here. Orphans from the wars. A few, perhaps. You saw the refugees gathered by the entranceway? They're all looking for a new start in the Dominion and beyond. Some of them take it as an opportunity to rid themselves of unwanted baggage. The shame of it. Whoever's behind this would have to have made themselves known to the children at some point. And so should we. You should start with the children around here, then. I doubt they're the ones involved, but they might have heard something. It's worth a try. All right, then. Questioning children. How hard can that be? You should come with me to the Dominion. Come, taste my peaches! They're sweet! Excuse me, do you mind if I ask you something? Can't stop you. I was just wondering if anyone has asked you to do anything out of the ordinary recently. <sighs> anything you grown-ups ever ask us to do is shut up and go away. So guess what I'm about to tell you to do? Sorry. I'll leave you alone. Just leave me alone. Come and taste my peaches. The finest everywhere from the free city. Do you have a moment? What do you want? What I want is to know who's asking children like you to pick pockets. I don't know. Nobody's asked me. What's picking pockets? Do you get paid for it? No, uh, you get in trouble for it. So if they come calling, you know what to tell them. I picked a hole in my pocket once. Is that bad too? The caravan stops next to the checkpoint. Can your traders pass? Uh, excuse me. What do you want? I... 
I, I don't have any money. It's all right. We're not going to hurt you. We just want to talk. W w what about? We've heard that some very bad people are making children like you steal from travelers. We need to know who's behind it so we can stop them. I don't know much about it, really. But my friend, Honza, he... He said he got a job doing something dangerous. Sounds promising. We need to find him and ask. Do you know where your friend might be? He's usually by the tent outside town. Thank you. You've been very helpful. He'll probably be by the tents. You... you won't hurt him, will you? Come on! Come on! Let me carry your goods. I'm cheap. That's that, then. She must have been the refugee camp. Let's hope he's still nearby. Daddy! I'm hungry. <laughs> that big fat donkey was easy pickings. He wouldn't have noticed if we robbed his boots off him. <laughs> yeah. Wish we hadn't handed over the pass, though. Could use one of those things to get out of this dump. Chance would be a fine thing. The moment they found out, they'd string us up by our guts. Would they now? Perhaps you'd like to introduce us to these... charming characters. Shit! We're in trouble now! What do we do? You two get caught if you want. I'm off. Hunza! Where are you going? So that was Hunza, eh? Jill, you watch these two. I'm going after him. All right. I need to find him before his employers do. Daddy! I'm hungry. Oh, shit! Cornered! It's all right, Honza. I'm not going to hurt you. I just want to ask you some questions. <sighs> Fine. Not like I've got a choice. I'm looking for the people who are making you steal for them. Who are they? Call themselves the Carl Stones. They said they'd give me good gill if I did what they told me. I knew they were bad, but bread doesn't come for free. Didn't come at all half the time, before I started buzzing for them. You know, if I didn't do it, they'd just pick on someone else. Someone they could push around easier. Hanza. You found him, then? Jill. Where are the other two? Eloise is watching over them. She sent Goots and I to look for you. <laughs> You're... him! I haven't got your pass anymore, if that's what you're after. I gave it to the cast stones. Whatever you do to me, I can't get it back. Not that I go against them, anyway. If it weren't for their gill, me and my mates would have starved. Cowards! You will not force another child to do your bidding. Wait, we're not... <laughs> Don't hurt him. You're making a mistake. We're on the same side. Like hell we are. That brute. Where did you get it? Uh, Master Theo. Uh, Goots. What are you doing with these people? Unless... you're the ones my sister was talking about. Your sister?
Eloise didn't tell us she had a brother. And why would she? I'm just her back and a blade. Theodore, at your service. Sorry about before. Theodore, what do you know of the cast stones? Vultures who have made Botlad their hunting ground. They prey on the desperate, stealing from those with Gil and bullying those without it into joining their flock. I had been looking into their activities in hope of sparing the refugees any further hardship. But it seems they've already stooped even lower than I'd feared. Hans is a good lad. Don't blame him for what they've made him do. If he and his friends hadn't agreed to work for the stones, some other poor souls would have. On pain of death, most likely. Clive, was it? And my sisters asked you to help put an end to the pickpocketing. Then we all want the same thing. I'm sorry. Where is it? 